Good tidings, people with good taste. I'm Des, and we are doing a weird episode today. I'm here with... Horror scam. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so here's the thing. The last Go episode was something else. And so we were like, yo, yeah. only the two of us have read Kikoin in this server. Yes. We are not gonna be able to discuss Kikoin stuff in the, in, the, in the vlog episode. We are the only cultured when they cry fans in, in the podcast. So so we were like, we are not gonna be able to discuss Kikoin stuff in the vlog episode. So let's just do a short episode just dedicated to the... Okay, um, <laughs> Higurashi goes spoilers. And also Mineko spoilers, Higurashi spoilers and Kikoin spoilers. Because... Holy shit! The, Go actually did it! Go actually bridged with Kikunya! How crazy is that? I know! Fucking Ryuki, she's like, oh, phase two is delayed infinitely, and just literally just fucking gives us this. <laughs> what the fuck, Ryuki? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feathering just comes in to, just comes in and spoils phase two for us. It's like, yeah, hi, Verve. Verve. It's like, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Verve. The, or or should I say spinal cord L D the whatever or, or should I say um, I don't know Mitsuko Feathering man I mean not Feathering Chungyu <laughs> yeah well, well yeah we're uh this we'll go more into this when we get to the main podcast episode next week but like uh Hanyu uh, Feathering's name is Chungyu in Go right now for us <laughs> yes. it, no one because... said Feathering. Because it's, it's apparently, Ryukishi says it's not Feadrin, but it's also not Hanyu. So from now, it is Chang'e's Hanyu. Okay, so we are not gonna get into, like, details, like... We're not gonna... We're basically just gonna cover literally, like, the first two minutes of this... Of the last episode. <laughs> yeah. You, you want to see the rest of the 18 minutes of the episode? Yeah, you're going to have to wait for the log. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what this is. Is this a log episode? Like a bonus log episode or like a, a different series altogether? It's just an episode. This, hap- this episode has no tag. It's just an episode. <laughs> no tag. I want... This is... <laughs> I'm going to call... I'm going to call this personally 10.5 of... Of the log. <laughs> of cool. It's... It's the OVA. It's the OVA episode. <laughs> this is where, like, we both go to the beach and talk about Sakonia. Oh, God. What, what, what are you, where, where is Go heading? Because at first, we were like, why is the story developing on the last five episodes? Are they going to be able to deliver a satisfying ending? Or are they going to reveal a season two? Then they introduced okay. the Neko elements. And we were like, excuse me? How, what are you gonna do with like five episodes? And then they introduced Kikoin elements. <laughs> now it's just like sure. The, okay. What next? Here, here, here's my little uh, joke answer for this. Uh, we have three episodes left. The end of last up, the end of the last episode twenty four is gonna be like, guys, tune in next season four when they cry go, and it's just <laughs> it's not even gonna have anything. It's not have Higurashi, Umineko, or Sukonia. It's gonna be focused on a completely different cast. But, like, occasionally you'll see, like, a, a character from a different cast. Or it's gonna be, like, the fucking Smash Bros. of When They Cry. Where they just have a big crossover of an anime. A side story uh, about racing boats that follows the loving character Kawabata. And his... It's about pirates. His fight for the achievement of the best tuned out boat. And occasionally you get an episode... You get Occasionally you get a free episode where... The, he transports to Shiromiya family to, to, to the mansion. That's the crossover episode. It's the break episode from all yeah, this the is, tension yeah. and emotions from the water boat races. This is what this episode of the podcast is. This is the beach episode. <laughs> <laughs> Without anybody, it was just us two because no one is cool enough to go to the beach. Could just the background of this episode just be a, the beach background for Zakonia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the Kikonia beach. What if we have the, the, the beach music on the background during this episode? <laughs> That'd be funny. Alright, shall we talk about the meta shit where we talk yeah. about? Yeah. Okay, horse game. First of all, where do you think this takes place in the timeline of Umineko stuff? Because, okay, 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 actually, before this. What is the fandom doing saying the meta world isn't linear? What, what are what are these people on about? Okay, 
I will say, I think they think it's non-linear because, like, it doesn't make sense with anything. And even though I don't understand why the meta world would be non-linear, because that would literally make everything so confusing. It's not even that. Okay, I think what they mean is that witches can jump from story to story. So to them, there is no time. But, like, we already knew that. We know that in the meta world, there aren't minutes, there aren't hours. But there are certain is a before and an after. Like, you can play Sumineko episode 2 after episode 1 and before episode 3, for example. So there is a timeline. It, it there is, is a timeline, but it's more of, like, events. I, I think events have causality, where, like, there are a before and after of events. But, like, like you said, there is no, a, 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 like, our definition of time. There is things yeah. happening, but it's not, like... You'll have events happen. Like I don't think there's non-linearity because I I don't understand the purpose of non-linearity because like I think they're going with the assumption that Sekonia is supposed to be like the latest in the timeline, even though I don't know if that's true and that hasn't been tr proven true or mm -hmm. false. And I don't believe that. And I re refuse to even think about where Sekonia places without any major evidence. Because otherwise, it's just semantics of where Sekonia is placed. Because, like, oh, you could be like, it's placed the latest because it's the most recent game in the series. Like, it could also be placed the earliest. It could be the earliest in the timeline. Mm -hmm. Very true, very true. Yeah, I think what, what they meant is just that since witches can be, like, let's say on the 4th of October in the Mineko timeline and then go back to the Higurashi timeline which is like three years before the Mineko timeline, time doesn't really exist to them, but that's like on the game board level, it's them looking into the game board. Because on a meta world, they have a timeline. They were first, for example, in Umineko, then they went to take a look at Higurashi, and then possibly came back to Umineko, and like, I don't know, I'm just throwing ideas out there, but there most certainly is a timeline. Because, for example, Butler was a different person before unveiling the truth about the Beato. So there, there, there is a timeline, bro. There is a timeline. Onikakshi came before Watanagashi, yo. Well, I uh, I will say, like, Umineko's timeline is a little bit different, where, like, you're following mostly re the timeline from Rika's perspective of, like, how she perceived the events than, like, someone else did. Because Rika doesn't go through the, go, doesn't go through the metal world as much in Higurashi, most of her time is oh, yeah. spent in the quote-unquote real world. Yeah, not to mention Higurashi has two meta worlds, and we only see one of them. You have the meta world above them, which is where oh, Fyadrin yeah, and Wambdo would be. Yeah, the game, the game board, like how Umineko's game board is completely fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the, the game board of Higurashi has a meta world itself. Like, because, like... Higurashi's metal worlds are like beginner's guide to Umineko's metal worlds, where like, <laughs> there's like six or seven of them. It's like, okay, Featherine is here, uh... Beatrice and Battler's game is here, and then there's Lambda. Lambda and Burn. I mean, not quite. I would say there is only one metal world in Umineko. I mean, no, no, no. Okay, wait. No. What I mean is that, like, the metal world level where Beato and Butler have their fights is the same metal layer in which Wamp and Bern exist. What I would say, if there is another metal layer, I would say it's not even a metal layer on the metal world, but a metal layer on the real Umineko world, if that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. it would be... Because, like, the real world we read about in Umineko... It's not really the real world. It's the real world written by Feadrin and Iku, uh, by Ikuko and Toya. Yes. So, like, the actual real world in Umineko... I mean, this is arguable, but I would say it's just... It's the... What comes after the choice between the trick ending and the magic ending? Because it would make sense from a thematic perspective. Because Angie would read the story that the butler inside Toya wrote for her. And then she would make her decision of either... Going to Rokinjima and going on, on her quote-unquote revenge quest to die and to find out the truth or to abandon it and accept the golden truth and all of those thematic lessons that she learns. So I would say that yeah. is the real, real world, which is kind of meta in a sense, even though it's the actual real world. And you have the real world written by Iko Coin Feathering. Oh, fuck. A by Iko Coin Toya. And then yeah. the meta world also written by Iku Koen Toya. Yeah, Umieko is a, a a mess of many different layers going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I imagine Sekonia is going to be even worse because they're introducing that virtual 
the vir- the virtual stuff. Yeah, yeah, is... yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I really want to to get into this once we start doing Kikonia Book Club. But since you mentioned that, I've got to say, I just love the parallels between Umineko and Kikonia. The virtual world is an excellent example of this. Because everything that happens in the meta world in Umineko is essentially what's happening in the virtual world in Kikonia. And what I think will happen. And it seems like it's going to happen. Uh, I guess. It's like in a world where you kind of spend more time in the virtual world than in the real world. It's kind of like your actual real physical body is your piece and your real you is in the virtual world. The real you is in the virtual world. You can't even change avatars on the virtual world. Come on, if this isn't Mineko, I don't know what it is. Oh, man, man, I really want to go into the Konya theories, but like, this is not the, the episode for that. Because I could go into like Koshka and Lujia. Yeah. Oh my god, Koshka. I want to talk about Koshka so much. Because that Spinal Tap thing. Uh, I think that Spinal Tap thing that she mentions, like the anomalous Spinal Tap LD435, I think, was the thing that she mm. said. It, I think that's a reference to like that whole thing that Sinconia had one scene in, that whole factory thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, okay. The, even though we're not supposed to get into Kikonia theories... Just as a kind of bridge into feathering and what's going on. I, I think I read this one theory that was rather interesting. That I, I'm not sure if it was actually in the game or a theory I read, but it just said that like that that was the virtualization plan, kinda. Because they would take this final cores and the brains and like digitize all the information and then everyone would live in the virtual world. Everything that would go on to happen after that even though the people there would perceive it as the real world, they would actually be living in the virtual world. And that would be how whoops would be happening. Like, this was a wild theory that said that, like, Higurashi and Umineko are both happening inside of this virtual world. <laughs> it's just conspiracy theories. I, yeah. It's int- Honestly, they, they don't like, have they don't have any fundament at all, but it's, like, so interesting thinking about these stupid-ass wild scenarios. Like, honestly, like, I don't think Go is going to get anywhere near, like, answering any of our questions about how is this connected to Go. Oh, definitely not. Because, like, fucking there's three episodes left and they have a whole character, (laughs) like, these whole character conflict to settle. (laughs) They have to settle in three episodes. Honestly, there probably might, like, the closer we are to the end, I honestly think there might be a second season coming. And that's a thing that, like, I'm scared about. I don't know. I just think it's... So crazy how since the beginning we've been making jokes about how this would tie back to Kikonia. About like that classmate they have the that meow. looks like Meow. And how we've been joking that like Satoshi would pop up with a gauntlet on his arm and save Satoko. And now we literally have Kikonia bridging in this episode. Like maybe Higurashi, maybe the start of Higurashi is the start of Sakonia's loop. Because we don't know the bounds of Sakonia's loop. I, I don't know. <sighs> But that doesn't seem likely, honestly. That would be that would be smudging the the frontiers between where he grew up. That would mean Meow is the original version of is the original version. <laughs> so 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 like the Looper was actually Meow from the Hinamizawa class, and just like Rika promoted into a player, so did Meow, and then Meow promoted into a witch, and then that witch wrote a tale, and that tale was Kikonya, and their piece was Mitake and Meow. What the fuck? <laughs> Honestly, I don't understand what the hell is happening. I'm just glad that like that Featherine also didn't mention fucking uh, Rose Gun Stay's character. <laughs> <laughs> okay, looking. At the Kikonya cast now, who would you say would be Feadrin's piece if there is one? Definitely not Jaden. You said Jaden had purple hair, and I'm <laughs> yeah, like, purple hair. Like, I like Jaden, but not. I don't like Jaden's that. <laughs> Jaden's too <laughs> stupid. I think Mary Carmen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am. I'm also placing my bets on Mary Carmen. Other than that, there is a what other purple hair guy. Bro, the Kikonya cast is just so stupid. Kikunya cast is just so dumb. Like, God, I, I wish there was a, a slice of life version of Kikunya. The slice of life in Kikunya is just so good. The characters are so goofy. The, yeah, because like the the archive scenes and uh, the end of Sakonya are are absolutely yeah. the one of the best scenes I've ever read. I in like all of Seven Dimension novels because they're really funny. They're like yeah, they're way better than Higurashi's slice of life, which are like, haha, you get screwed in this game. It's more like. 
that that's really funny like the scene where they're talking about the grossest foods is really great <laughs> yeah honestly speaking i think that the fragments slice of life parts were much more interesting than the story of kikoni itself but oh well hot takes i like i like sakonia's story you're just you're just un- i just Okay, first of all, I do not like politics stories. And then, like, Kikonia politics are so boring. I, I, just... I, I do think, like, I hope, like, Fusion... Like, I don't know how they're going to explore all these characters in the next three phases. Unless these phases are, like, 20, 30 hours long each. Because, like, only less less than a, f- than a fourth of the cast was explored during this entire... The mm-hmm. first phase. It was just yeah, what? this AOC, AOCU... <sighs> Okay, Ryukishi, why did you pick the most boring characters from each nation, except Miao, to be the focus of episode one? They are so boring. What the hell are you talking about? They're great characters. Gunhild and Jane are amazing. Same no, with okay, Chloe. I'm not talking about those horse games. I'm talking about the main four that got the spotlight. It was Miao, the girl from... Uh, the China, Lin... Uh, Lin... Li... Fuck, I don't remember her name. We something, and then Stainswa or whatever it's pronounced. And okay, Reta Bill is cool. Stan? But like the other ones, the other two are so boring. Especially Stainswa. Stainswa feels like an NPC, I swear. I think that's the point. And why are we going into <laughs> Konya stuff? Okay, okay, Go. okay, true, 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 true. Back to Go. Back to Go. May I just say, guys. Wambda is not Satoku. Stop saying this is Wambda's origin story. Wambda already existed on the original Higurashi. What do you mean? What do you mean this is Wambda's origin story? I agree with like what some people are saying, like that Featherine believed Satoko was Lambda's piece and not Lambda herself, which implies that Featherine doesn't know that much about the game board of Higurashi. Okay, I have an easier way to, uh, to explain this. Do you see how, just like we were doing now, we were looking at Kikoinia characters and we're like, okay, who's the purple-haired person that could be Feadrin's piece? See, this is how we, that understand the metal world, think. We're like, okay, like, these witches can have pieces in games and they're usually rather similar to themselves. And so, Feadrin coming into this game board... Knowing Wambda, she would see Satoko and be like, Aha, you're Wambda's piece, right? Haha. Even though, like, Satoko looks nothing like Takano or Feadrin. Oh, wait, but Feadrin wrote Higurashi. Huh. To think that doesn't fit, because Feadrin supposedly wrote Higurashi. So what is going on? Why, Why would she think? Oh, I think I see what's... Because, okay, Feadrin knows that usually Satoko would not be a witch's piece. But now, see, this all comes back to the Bern Game Master theory, because now Feadrin would not be the Game Master. Bern would, and so she would come here, see Satoko on the meta world, and think, so you're not a piece anymore, you're a witch, cool, so, haha, you must be related to Lambda, because Lambda would most certainly want a piece like you if she were to play Higurashi, since you two are so similar. Which would also kind of imply that Vier is indeed one of this piece. Yes. It's not nothing that deep, it's just Feathering literally thinking the same way we do. I, I do think it's very weird that they mentioned Vier, which a character that it's doesn't... Not... Okay, horse game, it doesn't have a V at the end. God damn it, it does not have a V at the end, it's just Vier, not Vier. Vier. Fuck you, I don't know languages, Give me moon. I don't either, but I can clearly see there is not a V at the end. Well, I don't. Well, at least you're not Simon yelling at me, freaking for mispronouncing, mispronouncing it. <laughs> Your German is not Germanically correct. Fuck you! I'm not German. <laughs> Anything else about Vier, or no. the fact that she looks completely stoned in her sprite? I think that's gonna be the thumb. <sighs> yeah, she just looks stoned. Also, what do you think the red scene? Ah, meant? that just means Feadrin just came back from watching Evangelion Rebuild 3.0 plus 1.0. <laughs> no, that, no, that that would mean like she was watching the Red Sea with, with Lambda Delta, and I don't think Feathery and Lambda would watch Neon Genesis Evangelion together. <laughs> they seem they don't seem like that close of friends. Ah, true. That is true. Maybe they watch an anime together, but not Neon Genesis Evangelion. You only watch that with your best friends. Ah, okay, so here's the thing. Umineta posted on Twitter a theory that actually kind of makes sense. 
which is that the name that Pedrin also called Satoko, Miyoko, or whatever it was. Misako. Apparently that means 35 in I don't know what language. The 34 from Takano and then the 35 from Satoko, if you put it together, I think it it was like 435 or something like one of them inverted that could mean them... that could mean 145 days until Sakunia phase two he's dropping a shadow hint we got no, it we got a release date <laughs> what do you mean it's COVID will be no more COVID will be no more in 400 days what is for four huh what is 30 well 35 plus 34 is what uh that's 70 that's 80 69 oh it is <laughs> It's 69. <laughs> okay, but no, but uh, okay, but like if you invert the 34 months. and it's like 43, and then you actually I don't know what the number combination was, but like she she put them the numbers together in a way that directed you to a verse in like yeah. some religious book that I don't even remember which one it was, and like the freaking verse that that number referred to was about Moises fucking splitting the Red Sea apart. I guess like. Ryuki, she really wants to help get people to get on Sikonia train. I guess she really <laughs> wants that because, like, Sikonia, like, like if you're like a religious buff and knows a lot about like the Bible and like the apot in the Book of Revelation, Sikonia's up your alley. If you haven't read it after we spoiled, like, I don't know, a good part of it. Actually, no, we haven't really spoiled a lot of it. Yeah. Oh God, I just hate when stories start going into religious stuff because. I don't know shit about religion. I don't know where to understand religion. I... Okay, so I guess... Last thing we we can actually discuss. Where do you think Kikonya then fits? Well, I would say... Because here's the thing. The issue is... Do I treat Umineko as an isolated entity? And just be like, okay, none of the stuff that happened in it really mattered... Or treat it as, this is an important plot detail that I need to go on to. What do you mean? Because a lot of the plot points in Numineko can just be self-encompassed and just be by itself with no effect on anything else. I specifically Lex. Because mm. the only character that has a really big character arc is Burn. Because Lambda and yeah, Feathery that's... don't really change that much. Yeah, but Bern is relevant enough in Higurashi to where... Because if we're going by the theory that Bern is somewhere in Kikonya, then the way we look for her would differ whether we're looking at pre-Umineko Bern or after Umineko Bern. Because at the start of Umineko, Bern was, was very, how can I say this, apathetic. She didn't emote much. And then by the end of Umineko, she's a complete bitch. She's just a bitch by the end of Umineko. So, so like, she got more lively, but she also got more terrifying, I would say. Okay, I'm going to say this. I think Sikonia falls either at the earliest in the timeline, way like, way before Higurashi, and oh. either before okay. Higurashi, or... No, not before Igarashi. It would have to take place after the original Higurashi, but before Umineko, or after Umineko, but before Go. Either way, Go is going to be after Sakonia. Okay. Or at least phase okay. one of Sakonia. We also have to take into account that it, it may be happening at the same time as other stuff. Like, for example, let's say the f um, by the end of Go, Featherin was... I don't want to say writing nor reading, but like let's just say Feadrin was in Kikonya phase two, and then she was jumping back and forth between Kikonya and Umineko as Umineko was going on, and like let's say she got to phase four when Umineko was in f episode six. Like they can be happening at the same time, right? Uh huh. Okay, so here's what I think. Whatever phase Kikonya is on by this point in Go. I would say that that phase happens. I mean, it doesn't happen, but like Feadrin experiences it between Higurashi and Umineko simply because Chung Yu looks like a middle stage evolution between Han Yu and Feadrin. Yeah. Like, Chung Yu does not look like something that would come after Feadrin. So Konya can be tapping around the same time as Umineko. So basically, the timeline would look like this. 
Higurashi at one end, and then a, just a stack of things happening of, like, Umineko, Sikonia, and Higurashi Go all happening around the same time. Yeah. I would say we were talking about how Chang Yu slash Feathering looks. Then, like, episode six would be the the latest, according to what you say, where, like, Umineko's episode six through eight happen the latest in the timeline, while mm. it probably starts with, like, Umineko episodes one through four and five at some point, with Sikonia happening sometime in between the question arcs. Probably yeah, okay, happens I, during the question arcs. There's just no way to know whether, like, Kikonia happens simultaneously with Umineko, or, like, only up to phase two happens before Umineko, and then the other two phases are, like, Feathering experiences them after Umineko. What what we do know for sure is that Kikonia is either finished or ongoing in between Higurashi and Umineko. In between Higurashi Go and Umineko, I mean. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Feathering has. F- this is my thing. I don't have any evidence for it, but I personally think that this Feathering is not during, is not after the events of what would be Zikonia Phase Four. I don't think this Feathering has seen the How end do you of know? Zikonia. I just I don't think I just don't think Ryukishi has thought that far ahead to bring a character from a se- from the end of a series that hasn't end yet ah that is true that is probably very won't true. end for another five years that is very true okay but here's another thing we have to take into account if we go by this thing that we have been talking about that would mean that umineko would have to happen after go and that would imply some things that would imply that if Bern is in go in some way then that would be pre-umineko Bern, which would change some things yeah because because Bern, okay, I'm I'm trying to think about how this would affect my Bern game master theory, because, <laughs> because of course I am, and like the wound from being stripped out of her happy ending would be more fresh now than it would be after Umineko, and so in a weird way this kind of ends up supporting the Bern game master theory. Maybe this is Bern's first game. This is her first time being game master. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think she's ever been game master. She has. I think wasn't she the game master in I know that was one of the in EP five. Yeah, Lambda. Well, she was yeah, game Lam- master in her game in the yeah, interactive te- game. Oh yeah, technically. That would be your And also EP seven. EP seven was Bern. Uh there was something else I needed to discuss. What was it? What was it? Ah okay. S- sushi had a theory that oh. because of Lambda's talk about super paper she like she in some way she ended up finding out that one of the talk about her being super paper and the way that she acts in EP eight kind of gives off the vibe that Wamba has tried writing something, but it was either not well received or she failed at it. I cannot explain it properly, but like it made sense at the time. And just I just want to quickly mention this. This is where we find out that Lambda Delta is a fan fiction writer. <laughs> No, but she actually is because EP5 is kind of a fan fiction if you think about it. I mean, it is. Then she's the game master in EP5. Uh, but anyway, would you not agree that Kikonya feels awfully like something that Lambda would write? What yeah, would the Kurupoyo I... thing and all? Yeah, that would. Because that, cause that was my theory when I was reading Sikonia. I was like, Lambda's the game master. Lambda wrote this for someone. I don't know who. Yeah. My theory was like, Lambda's writing this for Burn for for some reason. I, I, I can find you a reason. It's because Burn and Lambda look at stories in very different ways. Lambda wants to connect with the characters, like we see in EPA. She goes as far as sacrifice herself to save these fictional characters. And, whilst Burn looks at it in a very analytical way. And so... Lambda would be writing Kikonya, if she's writing Kikonya, in a way that both of them could enjoy together. Just like they did enjoy Mineko together. That's why it would be a when they cry. Because they can only enjoy when they cry. <laughs> that's why I think that's why uh, Burn. I don't think Burn, at least in phase one, doesn't show up. At least has a sprite. I think. Yeah, that's Shadow Sprite. Because the Burn character is not one of the Gauntlet Knights. It's someone else hmm? it's i i believe i'm getting into sakonia stuff but like i believe burn is that character that matches his meow that ah. matches his meow before before like the final conflict of the ah. 
God damn, I wish we had voice acting. God damn. <sighs> I don't think it would have voice acting anyway, because I don't think it's a voice message. Ah, uh, that is true, that is true. Ah, oh, God. Okay, so what is your collective general theory right now? Is that first comes Higurashi? For Higurashi, we can agree Higurashi goes first. Mm -hmm. That's... No, yeah, specifically, Higurashi is first, not Higurashi Go is first. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Higurashi... OG Higurashi comes first, then... Kikonye is somewhere muddled. I would say Umineko either immediate. I would say the question actually for Umineko is around the same point of Zirconia phase one. <sighs> and Go, we can agree that comes definitely in between Oji Higurashi and Umineko. Yes, I think that is. I think it is kind of before Umineko. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, anything else that you would like to discuss? I think we're pretty much yeah. wrapped up here. Yeah, I think we're done. Oh, well, so this was our OVA episode. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed our our time at the beach. It was really fun. Yeah. Ah, so, yeah, tell us what you think about our theory in the comments below. Please yell at and... us. I, I'd like to get <laughs> yelled at. Please tell us how stupid we are and how we're not thinking about Umineko correctly. Yeah. I like and how, that. And, and tell us how the meta world is non-linear and stuff. <laughs> I honestly, I actually want someone to argue with me about this because I tried to argue some with someone about this because I wanted to understand what their point of view is, but they just refused to argue with me. So I'm just like, bruh, how do you expect me to understand your side? Anyway, fake witches. Uh, yeah, uh, see you in the vlog episode. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Whatever this is. Tune in next time for Higurashi Log Episode 11. <laughs>